Welcome to At the Disney Movies with the Hearts. I'm Kelly. I'm David. And this is Night Crossing. From 1982. East Germans continue to try. Some will succeed. No one knows how many will fail. This is the story of one attempt. What a movie. This is not like any other Disney movie, so buckle up. <laughs> yeah, no, it's... I don't think I would know that this was a Disney movie if I didn't go into this knowing it was a Disney movie, that's for sure. Yeah, it is a super serious retelling of a true story. Yeah, so that was, I think, the biggest surprise uh, going into this movie was, I like, I guess, I guess, like, like looking at the end of the movie, I don't think I would have believed you if you would have said this was a true story. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sure it's dramatized, but... I looked it up after the fact. It's true. Like, that's what happened. All right. Fair enough. Like, well, we don't want... Do we want to give away the end right away? Were they, like, right on their tail like that? So, okay, that's the only part that was dramatized, okay. was the ending was a little dramatized, or they didn't know it was them until after they'd already okay gotten there. But they also had... Because I, I had to know. I had to look it up how true it was. They made three attempts at crossing oh. they made it on the third attempt not two oh. so that was but yeah like the whole process and everything was the same so this wasn't on disney plus so we don't have a description to read no i mean well hold on i can just is there one on amazon yeah probably so i'll just do 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 So there is a uh, synopsis on Amazon because this is not on, or yeah, on Amazon because this is not on Disney Plus, but you can rent it for two dollars and ninety nine cents on Amazon Prime. Yeah, you gonna read the description? Sure. Uh, it's quite a lengthy description here. Two young couples escape from East Germany aboard a hot air balloon. That is the most basic way you could put it. So this is set in the late seventies in communist East Germany. And people hate it there, obviously, because they can't leave. They're not allowed to leave. People can come visit them and leave, but they can't leave. Which is, I, I guess I don't really know a lot about German history with this, so it's just that whole thing is very confusing to me. So that's the Russian-controlled part of Germany, the East oh, Germany. okay. The communist part. They wouldn't let people leave because all of the people would have just left. Because it was terrible. Yeah, nobody wanted to be in communism. It was, it was horrid. You... So we open up and we... Well, before we get into the, okay. the movie... All right, though, fair I mean, enough. So we just talk about the actors and we did, you know... Well, the only, I only know one of the actors, so... Yeah, I mean, that's true. It was directed by somebody named Delbert Mann, who just had directed a ton of movies I'd never heard of from, like, the 50s and the 60s. Right. And apparently the 80s. So he's clearly done a lot, but I don't really know him. We have somebody named John Hurt as Peter... Um, and he's actually been in a lot of 80s movies. Like, he was a very was prolific he? 70s and 80s actor. He was in 1984. He was an alien. He was an elephant man. He was in a bunch of other movies. And I, I he looks kind of familiar. Like, I'd seen it him It makes before. sense. He's good. But which one, which, which person did you know? Bo Bridges. Oh, yeah. And I don't really know what I know him from. I've just seen him. I think him. I just know his name. Yeah. And I, I've seen him before. Like, he feel like he's one of those character actors. He's been in a lot I of I think stuff. he might be Jeff Bridges' brother, maybe. Or yeah, no, the I think, other I think, Bridges guy's son? Yeah, no, I think that's actually correct because he does kind of look like Jeff Bridges. Like, they look kind of alike. Yeah, so it's one of those things. But, but... he's super young in this one because only Bo Bridges that I am familiar with in my head is kind of like, he's like a little middle-aged and kind of fat. So. Yeah, well, and this guy looks like he could have gone that way, so I guess that makes sense. I mean, it's pretty obvious in terms of history with the movie, both of us. No, I don't think anybody's ever heard of this movie. But they, ugh, yeah, um, which is... I don't know. This is... What were your initial overall thoughts? It was really long. Yeah. But it was good. It was a good movie. It was well acted. It was well made. It's a good movie. It's a... And it, I mean, it's a really serious subject, but it was good. It was it's a yeah. good movie. No, I agree. 100%. Like, I... Yeah. I didn't realize it was that long until we were, like, halfway through and we paused it to go take care of the dog or something. I didn't realize it had been an hour. It didn't feel like it had been an hour. I See, I felt the hour. I wasn't mad about it, but it was just... 
to me, I mean, it's an 80s movie, and a lot of those 80s movies kind of drag along yeah. a little, but, but I didn't, I wasn't mad. I, I, I like really it. I really liked it a lot. Like, yeah. I, I, this is a story that, like, I don't know why more people don't know about this story. Like, well, I mean, people your age don't, but people my age and older, of course they do. Oh, you know about this? Well, not this specifically, but stories like this stories about oh, east no, germany no, no. i'm talking about the specific story okay of some family escaping on a, a homemade hot air balloon i can't believe it like, took them that long to figure that out <laughs> that like this is crazy but no i really enjoyed it and like the story's just bananas to me like it's just crazy well but un- I definitely, unlike a, a lot of our other disney movies this is very accurate to yeah. science and facts and like mechanics like they did a really good job of making it very real yeah no i um i don't know what i was expecting like and you know what else was crazy except for like a a brief cat at the beginning there were no animals in this movie which is very not disney that is there were no animals oh and like the guard dogs but those don't count oh yeah the guard dogs that were tied to the wires that they had to run along yeah their running track yeah (laughs) that was so weird i was like what is this it definitely kept my attention for the whole movie considering how long it was and like yeah like when we go through the different scenes like there were parts of the movie where i was like would like literally kind of on the edge of my seat like oh my god oh my god what's gonna happen the story was really well told like really I, i really liked it like i definitely think that more people should watch this movie it's it's very educational and it's very like it's just a good story totally i think i think this is a really good movie for your generation and younger especially to watch because you guys all grew up in the like connected everybody's together world not this like gigantic free world even though people don't think that this world that we have now is totally free in comparison to like the late 80s that I kind of grew up in up until the early 90s when things started to kind of free up. I mean... Yeah, no, it's definitely, like, you were really rooting for them throughout the entire movie. Yeah! And, like, it, it was really, really good. Um, but let's kind of get into it, I guess, from from the beginning of the movie. It opened up and it was, like, some World War Two footage. Is that what that was at the beginning? So, no, that was... So, that's footage of post-World War II. Um, I think, like, a... I think maybe 10 or 15 years later when they decided to build what is known as the Berlin Wall. Gotcha. Which is that whole area of fence line where they fenced in all of East Germany so people couldn't escape. Because they were losing all of their people to the to West Germany. Because why wouldn't you want to be free? Right, exactly. I mean, the uh, one of our characters, his goal in life is to be an auto mechanic. And he can't because the government made him a delivery boy. Think about that, ladies and gentlemen. In this country, nowadays, if you're an auto mechanic, you're kind of at the bottom. And that was this dude's dream. Yeah. And he couldn't because that was his assigned job was this is your job. This is what you have to do. This is your place. Which is just really crazy to think about. And it kind of makes you think this movie is like, like the, this part of history seems like it's much older than it is, but this is only the eighties or like the late seventies, early eighties. It only ended like at like 1989 or something like this is not that far away like this can happen again like don't get yourself crossed up after it shows the footage basically it just like goes in there's and the the only part of this movie i think i didn't really like was at the beginning i had a hard time telling who was who Who who? yeah it really was tough to sort out i wish they kind of would have um they didn't really do this back then because i think they expected us to be able to pay more attention back then yeah they it like would have been nice if they would have been like Blah, blah, blah as Peter. Blah, blah, blah as Doris. Blah, blah, blah as yeah, Petra. Yeah, because we had to like pause at the beginning and be like, wait, what's this person's name? Yeah, who is this person? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Let's get this right so we're not confused for the rest of the movie. Yeah, so there's like, and at the very beginning I kind of got a little confused. So was the part where they're sitting like in the pub, was that, that was like before the dad picked his kid up from school, right? Mm. Or was that after that? I I kind of I, I think it might have been it is I can't remember basically interchangeable but they're in there smoking and drinking which is hilarious and the one guy who is Gunter he's like oh let's not talk about like whatever he just wants to like have small chat and be like happy and then have a good Peter time for a and while. the other guy who I don't remember who the other guy Joseph. was Joseph Joseph oh that's right see I forgot all about Joseph Joseph they're like talking about how like oh we want to escape, escape and this and that. 
Oh, that yeah, that's right. Because when they pull up, Yosef's son, um, Lucas, is like outside trying to get people to sign like a petition. He's being like a political activist. Yeah. His dad doesn't approve and all this stuff. And so he's like, oh, Lucas is, you know, he, he wants to leave and blah, blah, blah. Well, he does approve, but he doesn't approve of him doing it the way he's doing it. So out in the open. And yeah. He's worried about him. And so they're talking about it in the bar. Mom. And that's where the... you see where she's shopping. And you can't, there's nothing to buy, really. Like, yeah. her and a lady, like, grabs an onion away from her really quick, and it's the only one. And the lady's like, I feel really bad. I should not have done that. Here, you take this, please. Like, you can take it and pay for it. Yeah. Because that's what happens when you have communism, is you have shortages. You don't have people working to make the things that society needs. Yeah, exactly. And they go home, and, like, their their grandmama is visiting them, because apparently she lives in the West. Yeah, she lives in the West, so she can bring over a bunch of supplies and make good food yeah and she made like cakes or something and yeah. like the their the little kid is like oh a cake <laughs> <laughs> well both of them were hogging yeah. it down like oh, <laughs> and it yes. did look good to be fair it was like some sort of layered oh man german but think about that some cake. german grandma thing like that you know it's good and this is like back in the 70s, yeah. late 70s when they didn't have a bunch of preservatives it was real <laughs> well actually in germany they have purity laws they don't really get down like that that's that's true yeah. i guess but it did look good whatever they were eating but, and then it goes to Lucas and he's taking like a friend or his girlfriend. A, a girlfriend who, I was like, oh, this kid's got like a hot girlfriend. Like, what's up? And <laughs> no, he doesn't care about that. <laughs> well, and that was like right at that kind of moment where this turned because to take her across the border. Well, into the, what do they call it? The zone. Oh yeah. It's like in between. Yeah. So when you get, anytime you get within like, I think they said three miles of the border, this crazy zone where there's landmines and alarms and everything. Like you're not free to move around when you're in the zone, but this girl's farm is on the zone. He has to take her home on his motorcycle. He yeah. drops her off and they say, you're not allowed to go past the family's farm right and then they're like oh you have to be back by 10 and so he like drops her off and i'm like oh okay he's gonna go back whatever and no he like hides his bike in the trees and then i'm like what is he doing yeah by by this piece of heavy equipment like a not a bulldozer but a a dumpster yeah thing with a big what are those called they have the big thing to haul dirt it's embarrassing that i or don't know stupid. what this is called i've driven one <laughs> for crying out loud um Ugh. big uh tonka truck type of thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> anyway he gets into this soldier's outfit gets into this thing and drives it straight at the border well first he like hot wires it to well yeah it start. i mean he hot wires he has some bolt cutters with him but he drives it right at the guard gate they're shooting at him there's bullets bouncing off of him it hits the guard gate it stops and they fall down and he goes and hides behind this building and he obviously had no plan because all of a sudden there's like all these people and dogs running at him he panics and runs out and runs, like, at the runs fence, up to the fence and then like the automatic jumps on it yeah automatic gun just boom, boom boom which was crazy for a disney movie i was like holy shit. shot dead with blood on a disney movie yeah crazy and it's coming out of his mouth and he's just laying there and then the guards come over and the one guard is like oh just leave him we'll pick him up later yeah he's still alive the one of the guards is like he's still alive and the other guy's like, oh just leave him so they let him just bleed out and die yeah. So not Disney. I think this is one of those political movies where they're trying to make a point to make people feel something. Because it's still only rated PG. Well, okay, so this came out in 1982. So this was real time. Oh, yeah, they were still in the middle of it. This was... This is cr So this is crazy. Okay. I think the Berlin Wall fell in 1989. Okay. So that they were or definitely... It might have even been 90 or 91. I feel really... No... I think it was 90 or 91. So the, yeah, so this is definitely very relevant to the time when it was released. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> okay. I mean, think the the movie only takes place 3 years before this, 2 or 5 to 3 years mm -hmm. before this. Yeah. And then it goes back to Peter's family and then their neighbor is this lieutenant guy named Hans and he like comes around and just starts asking them questions about the boy lucas his family and like all this stuff yeah and they're like i don't know anything well i mean he doesn't know anything but his that guy's dad the joseph guy works for peter it's yeah his employee yeah lucas the boy's mom is over at their house they haven't even told them that like their son is dead at this point yeah but they still go on their multi-family picnic anyways right, right even though the boy is missing and then the police it's all like a happy occasion and like the mom's like oh we shouldn't be here like they we don't know where our son is and then the police show up 
or the army or whatever. It's the police. It's like the secret police. Yeah. yeah. They like show up and they take the Keller family, which is Lucas's family. They Lucas take, and Joseph's family, yeah. They take them away. Oh, God, what happens after that? Because so, of my notes at this point, I was still confused over who was who. So I was like, <laughs> other family parents. Then they, so they take them away and we have Peter and Doris. Oh, that's right. Okay, because they have a whole scene where they're talking about how they want to leave and how terrible it and is. And they kind of break and down. They're both crying. This was a really good scene, actually. Like, yeah. it was, the acting was really, really good. The acting throughout this whole movie was really good. All the people but, were rock solid. But this specific scene between the two of them it was being re- married. Yeah, it was really like, good. talking about it. Especially the guy that plays Peter. He is a really good actor. Oh, I thought, I thought they were both really no, good. No, she was great, too. That specific scene was really, really good. Because it really kind of pulled you in connecting with them and feeling what they were feeling and it humanized them both in a big way because at first you weren't you weren't even sure who the main characters yeah, were exactly. it's like wait what 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 so peter then at this point peter and then so gunter the other guy because they've taken yosef away at this point the dad of lucas they've like right. taken him away and they they promise uh, his family to like help and look after him yeah. And then all of a sudden it flashes and it goes to... And this is one of the only things that bothers me. Is it didn't tell us at the beginning of the movie what the date was. Through the rest of the movie, there's dates. Yeah. So now we flash ahead. We don't know how far. To 6 1978 And this is where clearly Peter's been thinking about how they're going to escape. And so... He starts talking to Gunter about building a hot air balloon. Yeah, he's and, like, oh, you're crazy, you're crazy. But Gunter's like a master mechanic, even though he's a delivery boy. Like, he is a master. Right. And you, you just start to get a sense at this point, like, how restricted their life is when they're, like, talking about how they're going to have kind of steal materials from their jobs and kind of their life is so tracked that their time, they're going to have to figure out how to even just explain where they are at any given time, which is just nuts if you think about yeah. it. Yeah. And they have to go to, like, some special shop to buy all the fabric. They have to, like, lie about what they're buying. Obviously, what they're buying it for. But Well, sure. Like, but, oh, but, we can't go to this shop because but, they'll know us. But and... just even the fact that if you want to buy 1,500 square feet of fabric and somebody's going to ask you why is crazy. Because that's really... It's a lot of fabric. It's, but it's not, like... Uh, I mean, it is a lot. Like, it was, like, 1,200-something yards. It is a lot of fabric. It is. But it's not... I don't know. It's not like crazy. Like I don't know. It doesn't seem like that much to me. But they like bring it home. And they but have see, this... I mean, I, that's one of the things though. Is the reason it doesn't seem crazy to us is because here you could have like a business where you're going to do something with it. You're going to make something with it. Yeah. There you can't do that. You can't have a business. Yeah, I know. So they have to be like, oh, it's for a camping club. Yeah, which was really smart, actually. They're it like, was. oh, we're building tents for our camping club. Yeah. And then they bring it home and it's all wrapped up and they have this nosy <laughs> ass neighbor who like comes over and she goes, oh, what's that? What's that? They're like, oh, it's, it's just blah, blah, blah. They're like, oh, is that the rug? Is it a rug? Or they're like, say it's a rug. She goes, oh, that's the one. Oh, let me come in and see it. They're and like, no. see, and see, and in those societies, you always have those kind of people who cannot wait to tell on you if you've done something wrong yeah because they're building it at gunter's house yeah well because he's the master builder or whatever maybe yeah yeah well no i guess he's just sewing so i guess maybe he just knows how to sew but yeah there's a whole like montage i guess where they're like cutting the fabric out down the hallway yeah all over the place and gunter is sewing it and this is one of those so thinking thinking about this because my mom so is a master seam choice and the machines we have nowadays you just lightly push a pedal and it just goes so they're using one of these old school sewing machines where you have to literally pump your leg for every single stitch and they're sewing a whole hot air balloon like this yep and that dude's he's like my legs are killing me well, understandably like yeah. you would be in so much pain when you think about how much how that much would take pumping You'd have to do it with your poor little calf. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah. And his wife... Um, and I'm... And so by this time, in, an, in like, the Western world, you would have had an automatic sewing Exactly, machine. yeah. No, and this is, like, an old school, you're pumping your leg. That might have been the best they had, though. No, no, Because no, that was one was. of the things, is technologically, arms-wise, the East at the time, like, with nuclear weapons stuff and fighter jets... They could kind of keep up with us on the home side wise. They couldn't even touch what the West could do with cars and home stuff and all that kind of stuff. Like we just destroyed them. Yeah. That's how we ended up winning the Cold War. I mean, was by just having a better way of life and being able to prove it. So throughout this whole time, uh, Gunter's wife, Petra, 
is super worried. I mean, understandably. And nervous. Yeah, they have very little kids. Yeah, like basically babies. And she's like having nightmares in the middle of the night, wake up and they're like, I'm falling, I'm falling, I'm falling. Like, (laughs) she is really not taking it well. Like, even though she does want to leave, she just can't do it. Yeah, exactly. And in between this, Peter runs into Yosef at the pharmacy. And I don't understand exactly what, like, he's clearly all messed up because they let him go or whatever. He's all depressed because his son is dead and this and that. But well, like, I think they psychologically tortured him. I think that was a big part of that type of... What was he doing in the pharmacy? Because the guy was like, oh, this is a super high painkiller. He was like, doing drugs. Okay, but then, he's like... He's just buying drugs to be able to kind of get away from it. Because they panned outside and he has, like, a handler. Okay, Gotcha. Yeah, no, that's why I wasn't sure exactly what he was doing. But, and that's the last we see of them, like their family, like that's it. It's over. Yeah, it's over with them. Like, he's just probably trying to kill himself with drugs. And then at this point, Petra's having more nightmares. And so basically she's like, I'm not, we're not doing this. And so Gunter has to tell Peter, like, I'm sorry, like, I can't do it. Yeah, my wife don't, doesn't want to do it. If it was just me, I would do it. Yeah. So, and, and then Peter and Doris go out on a hill on a picnic and yeah. decide that they're going to involve their son, Frank, which I really like that. I really like that they're getting their kid involved. Like, I think that if you're trying to do something like this... Well, you, he's not like a little kid. He's no, like, he's, he's, like he's like a like, senior in high school, basically. Yeah, yeah. I, it, it, that was like, I, I really liked that. Well, and the fact that he's like... The other thing I really liked about this movie, there wasn't a lot of like... Oh, you're like, oh, stupid wife or like woman. There wasn't a lot of like sexism in this movie, which was kind of nice. He was like, he literally was like, I won't get him involved unless you're okay with it. And she was like, okay, like fine with it. And so they came to that decision as a family, which was really cool. But then there's like a whole montage of him and his son, like trying to make it better and trying to get it to work. And then there was one part where it lights on fire. Right. A lot of trial and error. A lot of them just, you just see them prototyping and making better and better burners. And then, like, it finally gets to where they're out in the field and they're able to get it lifted up, the balloon part lifted up. Yeah. And I was really happy. I was yeah. like, oh, yay! I was Ooh. I was really happy for that. <laughs> and then they all, they basically just decide they're going to leave then. Because they yep. go to grandma's house or something. And they get a picture of the grandma and the grandpa. Yeah, and she knows that, like... She has a feeling that, that they're trying to escape. That it's they're going to be their last visit because she gets all emotional with her daughter. But then, like, they end up getting a liftoff. Look at us! We did it! <laughs> we did it! Yeah, they float away. I mean, they... They get going. But the guard tower sees them because it's at night and you can see the fire. It looks like a giant floating lamp. Yeah, basically. I mean, it's ridiculous how visible it is. It's like, oh my god. Which I didn't even really realize. Mm -hmm. But then they're up really high and it's really cold and there's a cloud. And so it basically stops the gas from working. It extinguishes the gas and it like wetens the... It wets down the fabric. Yeah, and so it can't go. And so then basically they're going to crash. And they do. But, like, it's not bad, though. Like, it's... Well, no, it's still a gigantic parachute. I mean, there are hot air balloon crashes that can go wrong. But, I mean, they just kind of gently float back down. Yeah, but then it, like, still tries to float away now that they're out of it. And the kid's, like, trying to hold on to it. And the dad's like, just leave it. We can't do anything about it. And it floats away. Yeah. Which I, I, at that point, I was like, oh, that's a huge mistake. Don't do that. Which it was. Get it restarted. Know. Well, they couldn't have done anything with it, really. But then at this point, we don't know if they've made it across the border or not. And it's all tense. And then the dad, Peter, like, is like, okay, I'm going to walk ahead and see what I can see. And then he discovers that they're still, they're like, not even a mile, like, 100 feet away from the fence. Yeah. They're right in the zone. So yeah. they didn't make it. No, and they, so they basically have to walk back to their car, but they have to be super secretive about it. And then, like, the balloon had ended up landing, crashing into the fence. Getting shot. Alerting everybody, basically. Yeah. And so then everybody's, like, trying to figure it out, like, where where it's coming from. And then they do get back to their car, eventually. Yeah, they, they had seen, like, a tow truck drive by there. 
they thought they were screwed that somebody found the car and they were going to tow it away and they'd know and they were really just paranoid at this point thinking that they knew it was that the government knew it was them that did this yeah and they were going to find them and then when they get back to their house she's like looking in her purse um doris is and she's like i've lost my blood pressure pills yeah and he's like oh they won't be able to trace it they're really common um but basically they're super paranoid then there's like a really good scene where he like he's super paranoid he's up at night and he like goes downstairs and peter is super paranoid. yeah peter's yeah. super paranoid and goes downstairs and then doris comes down there and he's talking about how he feels like a failure and how they were so close and this and that and then his kids come out which was really cute yeah frank comes out and is like we were close like we almost did it like we got to do this again but we did fly <laughs> papa you put us up there you you got us away from all of this yes in a very short while papa you know if it hadn't been for that cloud getting the balloon wet and putting out the burner we'd have made it and next time Yeah, and he's like, Dad, it was like you got us in the air, and they were like encouraging him. And I thought that was a really sweet, yeah, sweet scene. So they're gonna do it again. And there's like this big hug where they where he has crazy eyes, and they do it again. But he goes back to to Gunter, <laughs> and basically is telling him like, Oh, we did it. We didn't quite make it. And then so then Gunter basically just tells his wife like, We're doing this. Oh, and he had heard the rumor that of what had happened, which I'm yeah. sure circulates like like wildfire in those kind of areas yeah and basically like gunter just tells petra like we're we're doing this like and her mom is sick or something and they won't let her go to the west and see her yeah yeah of course and basically so i think that's kind of what pushes her like she wants to see her mom before she passes away so they gather the materials again but they have to be really careful because at this point the government is like they've contacted all of these because they have the original parachute or original um balloon so they're alerting all the shops like oh if anybody tries to buy this kind of fabric in large quantities so it's really difficult for them to get the material they need they have to just get it a few yards at a time so eventually they get it you know what they need to do and then it's kind of getting towards like the climax at this point and there's a whole scene where the our, uh, the military general, like, they, they find the blood pressure pills eventually. Yeah. And then, so then the, the SSD is hot on going to the pharmacist and finding out who's taking these pills. And they're basically, the pharmacist is going through a list and they're checking it. And this is as the families are, like, trying to pack everything up and, like... And leave. And get out of there. And, like, it's very close and dramatic about how they barely make it out. And then right. the kid, Frank, and Gunter were, like, on a bike separately. They weren't in the car, which I didn't really understand. I guess they wouldn't fit in the car. Yeah. But it, like, breaks down, and they barely narrowly escape, basically. <laughs> but they, they like, are going to go lift off, and they're getting the balloon up. And then everybody gets in the basket, and then one of the kids gets hit in the face with the yeah he's <laughs> like so random tugging rather than cutting the rope and it pulls out and comes back and hits him in the face yeah which was kind of random yeah but that's probably what actually happened though that's probably why they put it in there yeah but it it lifts but it kind of gets tilted so part of it lights on fire so there's like a like a rip in it but they have a fire extinguisher which is really smart i didn't yeah. think that was actually smart to bring that yeah they're spotted of course and it's very dramatic. Well, because they're looking for them, yeah. Right, because they'll, like, they know that they're leaving, essentially. They're like, oh, we've only been up for 27 minutes. And, like, it's pretty, seems like they didn't make it. And, because they crash again, because they ran out of fuel. Which, that part drove me crazy. They ran out of fuel the last time. Why would they not figure out a way to put more fuel on there? I was or, like, like, what? Or, like, as soon as you run out of fuel, throw the propane tanks off. You'll go, you'll float much farther. Yeah, that's probably true. Yeah, it that's is true. true. And maybe they, they did in real life. Yeah, I don't know. who knows. They're, but, um, but basically they crash again and then Gunter and Peter are like, they're like, okay, we're going to go ahead and check it out. And they find this like barn and then there's like some sort of like security, some person that police, like, police that stops yeah. them and you think, oh crap, they're going to get captured. 
And then he like, oh, let's come out. He's like, oh, come out here. And they're like, are we on the West? And the guy's like, oh, of course you are. I feel like that just based on the car, they would have known. Probably. Yeah. Probably. Based on the car and like the uniform of the person, they would have been like, oh, yeah, we're in the West. Yeah, because he would have had a different uniform. That's Absolutely. Sure. So they made it essentially. And so they light the flare and then the family comes running and it's all happy and they have champagne and, and all this stuff. And there's this big stuff, sweeping and... music. super happy for them yeah. and that's pretty that's the end that's of the it. movie that's it that's the end but then it has like the the after thing of like what actually happened and says oh it was like he got to be a mechanic and they they live in west germany and right so they're still still kicking over there i mean it it is a very it, that is the plot two young couples escape from east germany aboard a hot air balloon yeah yeah but, <laughs> but yeah that's the whole movie then it ends it is. So, what's your favorite part? So, I had a couple, actually. I really enjoyed the initial montage of them cutting, like, the fabric and sewing and making the balloon. I enjoyed that part quite a bit. See, that's funny, because I liked the montage of them getting his son involved. That was good, and too. And them experimenting with a burner. Like, I, I really thought that was really good. But then I really liked the end where, like, the police were gonna were closing in on him and they were barely, like, making an escape. And that whole, like, I, I enjoyed and they were going through the pharmacy cards. I enjoyed, that was really well done, I thought. But it sounds really silly, but I think actually my favorite part was it was after they failed the first time and his kids, like, came in and they told him, like, Aww. oh, dad, but, like, we did do it. Like, you got us this far. And, like, I just thought that was a really sweet that's scene. that's fair because it is like some super sweet so what so what was your favorite part the part where they get their son frank involved yeah and yeah. they're like making all the adjustments adjustments to the burners and yeah yeah that was pretty doing good. a lot of testing there was no music in this movie just at the beginning and the end there was super big crazy sweeping music that was really good Oh, I, like instrumental, like... That's the thing, is I thought I thought the music that they did have at the beginning and the end was really good. That's true. It did fit with the... It, well, it fit, but I mean, it was good, sweeping, classical music that was good. Like, yeah. I liked it. And as far as, like, the cinematography, like... It's really good. Yeah. I mean, I don't know that they necessarily had a big budget for this Yeah, but movie, it was just 80s but... fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, but, was... I mean, the shots were good, like, the shots of the people. Like, it was a well-shot movie. You weren't like, oh, this movie looks kind of stupid. Yeah. No, it was it was pretty good. And as far as your main character, I mean, you have a couple, really. Peter, Doris, Gunther. Yeah, I I mean, really, like, Peter is the main character. Really. I guess, yeah. But he he's great, like with the acting by everybody, but especially him. Like he he did, he was really really good. Yeah, he really did carry the movie. He did a really good job. And then as far as the villains, I mean, you have like the general guy, I guess. Yeah. That looked Who, like the bad guy from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. He looks but like the bad. He looks like the <laughs> German bad guy in every movie. Yeah, he's got like the little glasses. Yeah, and, like, yeah. yeah. And he was really oh no 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 no. It was great. Um, I wonder if he was the bad guy in Willy Wonka. Correct, sir. He looks just like him. I, they well, look the same. We may have to look. And then other characters, it was really just like the kids. Well, the kids and the spouses, Petra and whatnot, you know. Yeah, Doris was really more of a main character. She, she had more really screen was. time than Petra did. Um, but Petra was a good side character because she was crazy and then but she, she got... she wasn't really being crazy, Then she though. held it together. Well, I know, but I mean... She was just being like thinking about all of the things that could go wrong she was like what if we fall what if it catches on fire what if the kids fall what yeah. if the kids fall out which it's like when you look at how the basket it wasn't a basket it was like no a wooden plank with ropes on the side yeah like it was definitely not very safe and the fact that they had eight people that they built a balloon big enough to carry eight people it's pretty crazy if you think about that that's really impressive yeah it is it's it's insane and so the story, yeah, I mean, it's it's a pretty basic story, but like... Yeah, it's it's just a solid, somewhat predictable, but still 
really good twists and turns story. I didn't know if they were going to make it. Well, I didn't either. Because at the very beginning, if you remember, they were like, oh, nobody knows how many people died in attempts to make it. Right, or, right, Or right. didn't die or whatever. And it was like, this is one of those stories. And I was like thinking at the end when they were like, oh, we've only been in the air for 27 minutes. I was like, oh, they didn't make it. Yeah. They're just going to take them away. And then you know that they didn't make it. So I was actually really overjoyed that they made it. <laughs> I was really happy. You weren't the only one. <laughs> <laughs> What's the message of the film? Escape oppression. Yeah, perseverance. Yeah. General, yeah. Um, yeah, and it was really good. In terms of final thoughts, I just, I, I kind of already said this, but I really, I, I'm i surprised that more people don't talk, like, that I haven't heard of this movie. Like, people should watch this movie. It was really good. Yeah, it it was really good, really good acting. I mean, really solid. It was really slow and really long. But I didn't even really think it was that slow, to be honest. Like, I really enjoyed it. It didn't, it was just such a fascinating story. Like, I just, I, I, and the, you really wanted them to make it. Well, of course. Yeah. I mean, definitely. It, you definitely get invested. What kind of rating did you give this movie? So, I mean, it was very long. It was really good. I didn't want to go too high because it's not like I'm going to go out and watch this movie again. I don't know. I think when we have kids, I would probably want them to watch this movie. So I gave it a 61. Just enough to be a good movie, but it's not something that I'm going to go run to go see again. So I rated this movie a little higher than you. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I just... It really surprised me because I was like, oh, I've never heard of this. It's probably not very good. But I really, really enjoyed it a lot. And I just, I felt a very strong emotional connection to the family, which is a big thing for me. Like, and the acting was so good that, like, I genuinely was, like, really happy that they made it. I gave this movie an 84%. That's good. I don't, I don't, I can't even really argue with that. Like, I really, really enjoyed it. And I definitely think more people should watch it. So it does not have a critic score with the Rotten Tomatoes, which is really weird. <laughs> well, I don't think it was necessarily a super popular movie. Clearly. But with the people, it's sixty six. So okay, you know, it's pretty good. Nice two thirds. Yeah. Of people give it a positive review, although I really don't understand how you could rate it negatively. I mean, I guess some people might think it's boring, or they're just not into. Maybe some people are super like pro east germany i don't know oh but... <laughs> that could actually make up for well and maybe that. like when this came out you know it was during that time when this was happening so maybe it was considered controversial at the time when it came out yeah but this isn't at the time there's no critic score that's what i'm saying this is all people i know but i'm yeah. saying think about it like it's not like like if this had not been on the list and we hadn't have found it this way like there's no way i would have watch this movie yeah, i would have never true. found it so anybody that's rated it probably saw it at the time it was maybe out it's a good point so maybe it was considered i don't know controversial or i don't know i don't know just, i would bet people thought it was slow yeah which is crazy to me like i don't know i really liked it all right wait so it's time to pick the next movie no <sighs> okay i was trying to like maybe avoid it somehow yeah i know i could tell so. Just because, like, we've been getting a lot of modern movies lately, and so I'm like, oh, it's we're clearly going to get How a was that modern? Well, this one was not. This one, But before this one, all of our movies were, like, newer. So and... our number is newer. It's 242. Okay. Which is... <sighs> oh, boy. What? The Princess Diaries, 2001. <laughs> Oh my god okay sorry uh, that was me clapping because i i am i am very familiar with this movie what do you think it's about i uh, i have i have a good idea of what this movie is like i want to watch like, this right now it's like some chick <laughs> that uh was just a regular girl and then she found out she's actually a princess or something like that yes and it's got some it's... some girl with brown really fluffy hair so I saw this movie in theaters. Oh, I have no doubt about with, that. But I saw it with both of my parents. All right. And I haven't watched it for a really long time. So oh, like, really? Okay. So, like, I remember when this first... I think came, I've seen even bits and pieces of like, this movie, Like, okay, so maybe. there's a lot of... Actually, what I remember 
I feel like this movie should be good. I don't know. It's been a long time. But I well, you clapped, so I imagine you think well, it's good. Well, because I liked it a lot when I first saw it, and I did watch it a number of times after that. And I also this is based on a book series, and I read the book series. When oh, I was so a kid. you love this? What I, are you talking I just, about? I'm trying not to taint your opinion too much. Okay, you know, but... okay, but still, well, you're not like, oh, well, you have to like this. No, or, no, no, yeah. no. It's I mean, it's definitely targeted where at it females. Me. Like, yeah. But, but Julie Andrews is in this movie, and she's amazing. So, um, and I just remember it being kind of funny. And I think my parents both thought, like, they were. I remember when we left the movie theater, they were surprised they liked it. Like, my dad was like, Well, I didn't think I was going to like that, but I actually kind of did. Like, he was surprised because I think it'll have some funny parts. Um, and it'll be interesting because I haven't seen it for, it's been at least like 10 years. Wow. Okay. Fair enough. So. Uh, I don't think we have anything else. No, just um, definitely if you can, please like, subscribe, share, leave comments, good or yeah. bad. We love all of the comments. Yeah, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Twitter at the Disney Movies with the Hearts or at the Disney Movies. Our website. Yep, at, our website is at the Disney Movies with the Hearts. You'll find us. But definitely sharing is the big one, so we can get more people. To listen, because I think every episode we kind of get a little bit better. And gets yeah, a little more yeah, absolutely, so, absolutely. Um, yeah, and hopefully maybe your favorite Disney movie will come up, and then you'll be really excited too. And even if not, the ones that you've never heard of, pretty good to talk about. Yeah, and definitely if if you end up watching one of the movies that we watch that you had never heard of, like Night Crossing, let us know what you thought about it. Yeah, because a lot of these movies deserve more attention than they've got. Absolutely. So. I don't have anything else, do you? I'm David. And I'm Kelly. This is At the Disney Movies with the Hearts. Bye! Bye! Yeah, it is. She's a, she's a running fool right now in her dream. Yeah, she is. And her eyes are twitching. Anyways, but... You got something else to add there, Lily? Lily doesn't think so. She was not a fan of that scene. Yeah. <laughs>